Hey everyone, so today we're going to go over the properties of the nucleus. So a lot of this you may have already learned in chemistry class, and that's great, um, but it's good to refresh anyway. Especially when we're going to be learning about nuclear physics, it's best to go over the basics again. So when it comes to the structure of the nucleus, the nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons. Um, protons are particles that have a positive charge of plus E. Remember, E is the charge of an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Um, and this is a positive charge of that amount. Um, it has a mass, and the mass of the proton in kilograms is 1.67 with some more numbers times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Um, whereas a neutron is neutrally charged, meaning it has no charge, or no net charge, I should say. Um, and it has a mass that's almost identical to the proton, though it is not quite identical. Um, and the reason for this is the protons and neutrons, they are not fundamental particles, meaning they are made up of smaller things called quarks. Um, and they're made up of different quarks. Um, so they're going to have slightly different mass. Now, in terms of notation, we're going to be using... Um, to help us kind of denote properties of nuclei. Um, we're going to be uh, basically using um, the atomic mass number, which is the total number of nucleons, meaning the total number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus. And we're going to symbolize that with the letter A. Um, and, ooh, voice crack, yikes. <laughs> um, we'll also be using proton number. Uh, also known as the atomic number, and that we're going to use the capital letter Z to denote. Um, therefore, if we wanted to, to compute the number of neutrons, um, it's going to be the atomic mass number minus the atomic number. Um, so when it comes to the nucleus, or how we denote it, or we, we could um, specify the cer certain nucleide um, through this notation here where this capital X is going to be the chemical symbol for the element. So for example, on the right here, I've got the various isotopes, for, or some various isotopes of carbon. Right? So we see here that we're dealing with carbon, because there is our elemental symbol. Um, and then we have two numbers to the left. One is a superscript, one is a subscript. Um, the superscript is going to be the atomic number, the total number of protons plus neutrons, whereas the bottom number um, is just the number of protons. Um, did I miss, I think I meant to say atomic mass number on top and atomic number on bottom. Sorry. Um, sorry for that confusion. But basically, protons and neutrons are on top, just protons on the bottom. Therefore, you can do some quick maths, um, math, math <laughs> by taking the top number, subtracting the bottom number, to find the number of neutrons. Um, so this helps us figure out if the, what um, isotopes we're dealing with. Um, what I mean by isotope, it's the same element, meaning it's the same number of protons. That's how we define what element we're dealing with. But the nucleus may have a different number of neutrons, right? Some of these are going to be more abundant naturally in nature than others. Um, and this is called natural abundance. And you can find the natural abundance of certain um, isotopes by looking them up in charts. Um, and we'll actually be looking at that and using those types of charts later on this unit. Now, how was the nucleus discovered? I'm actually not going to play this video, you know, copyright issues, um, but it's a really great one. So if I can figure out how to do the little, uh, I don't even know what it's called, the little thing over so you can click on this video and link to it, I'll do that. Maybe I'll put it in the comments. And if I don't, oh, well, you can, you can maybe search for it. Um, but basically, we're dealing with um, the Rutherford gold foil experiment. Um, when it comes to physics, a lot of modern physics, um, Certain experiments are very important and very interesting to learn about, and this is one of them. Um, so basically, before this experiment was done, what was generally accepted as how the nucleus was composed and what it looked like was called the plum pudding model, right? or kind of colloquially, uh, where basically you have some sort of region of positive charge distribution that's, you know, some source of positive charge, and kind of sprinkled in are the electrons, kind of evenly distributed perhaps um, throughout, um, kind of like plums and pudding, whatever. Um, so that's what the plum pudding model said. Now, in terms of physics, um, if we were to take, let's say, an alpha particle, meaning the helium nuclei, and kind of shoot it at, uh, let's say, a sheet of gold foil, very thin, um, according to the plum pudding model, what we would expect is um, that the alpha particles would go straight through. 
right? Because we have this kind of even distribution of positive charge, and according to Coulomb's law, there are basically not too much deflection. Maybe a couple, um, a small amount of degrees, but not much at all. Um, but when this experiment was actually done, so if you're taking these, relatively speaking, heavy helium nuclei and shooting them in a cool foil, most of them went straight through, but then some were severely deflected. And in fact, some of them were deflected so much that they went right back to the source of these alpha particles. Um, and that was very strange. Um, so basically, the plum pudding model was then chucked away. Um, it didn't make any sense. And they developed a new model in which the, they um, thought that the amount of positive charge now had to be really consolidated in this atom. It had to be very kind of bundled together in this nucleus. So if you ask how large a nucleus is, it's kind of hard to pinpoint because of this thing called wave-particle duality, which is pretty interesting. I recommend you Google it. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it's roughly speaking going to be following this formula. So the radius is 1.6, 1.2, man, 1.2 times 10 to the negative 15 meters times your number of protons to the one-third power. That's pretty interesting. Another thing we're going to be using when it comes to the nucleus is defining its mass. Um, typically, we might use something called the atomic mass unit to describe this. Um, and what the atomic mass unit is, is literally one twelfth um, the mass of a carbon-12 atom. That's how it was defined. I'm not sure if it's still defined that way because they kind of changed the def definitions of a lot of things recently, but it's basically that. Um, but that's going to be equivalent to 1.6605 with more sig figs, this is just five of them, times 10 to the net of 27 kilograms, um, which is also 931.5 mega electron volts over C squared. Kind of a funky unit there. Um, so if you're not familiar with electron volts, um, this is a unit of energy. An electron volt is the amount of energy gained by an electron when it travels through one volt of potential difference. Um, seems like a funky unit, but it's kind of nice because you're not dealing with um, numbers that are like, for example, times 10 to the negative 27. Um, so easier to deal with. Um, if you're not really sure how MeV over C squared is a mass quantity, um, you might be familiar or know of the equation E equals MC squared. Energy is mass times C squared. C is the speed of light. So with these units here, we're taking mega electron volts energy dividing by C squared. So according to E equals MC squared, if you move over the C squared, um, like we do, we get mass. Right? So that's how kind of those units work out. So here's a table of useful values for an electron, proton, um, a hydrogen um, atom, and a neutron. Um, hydrogen atom, that is including the electron. Um, so you have the mass in kilograms, atomic mass units, and mega electron volts over C squared. Um, now you see here the electron is much less massive than any of the other nucleons, and the other nucleons are relatively uh, similar. All right, so that's all I have for you today, and I hope that was a nice kind of refresher. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't, um, but nonetheless, hopefully you're um, getting excited for our next lesson, uh, which is which will be nuclear binding energy. Lots of fun.